Thanks, Maya. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here um, at Lewis Ferry. Welcome to those who are watching from home. And uh, our prayer, is, as always, is that as we gather, even though we gather separately and in different places, we are united in Christ Jesus and in our worship together. Thank you um, for being cautious in your lives and not being a place where people have to worry about coming together and will there be people with masks and without masks and will there be people in my face <laughs> or will there be any danger at all? So um, let's just keep up the good work and we will, if we do, and, um, and we don't have a massive, more massive spikes in, in numbers in our area, we will continue to be able to be together. But again, just a reminder to you here and to those watching, we will be looking at that each week, the leadership team each week to make decisions and notice by you if there's a need to um, close and stay away for a week or more. So we'll see how that goes. But on that note, I do thank you for, for your care for one another uh, and for yourselves uh, as you go about your daily lives. Well, it's Miracle Sunday today. <laughs> and a little different than we've been able to do in the past. So if you are still able to give, we certainly uh, will continue to receive those offerings by mail or online or here in the offering plate. And um, I know that John, who is in charge of our uh, new construction fund, is grateful um, for all that you are able to do, especially at this particular time. John, did you have anything else that you wanted to add tonight, today? Thank you. Uh, Miracle Sunday offering has been a significant portion of what we're able to put on the principal each and every year. And uh, thank you for what we've done ever since the inception and continue to do, and we hope to knock this principal out in five years or so. Good, thank you, John. Thank you very much for your, your work and service on that. Um, also today, it, it, and throughout um, the rest of this month, we will be continuing to collect mission monies, and the mission monies will go to the United Methodist Home for Children in Mechanicsburg. So I thank you in advance if you are able and God is leading you to give, to be obedient and give as you can. I wanted to also at this moment take an aside and thank uh, Carnes uh, for a big, huge donation that they made of food this week to the New Hope uh, Food Pantry. Uh, and thank you, Michael, for going over and picking it up. And um, there were... 17 cases of cereal, 20 cases of oatmeal mixes, almost 20 cases of canned goods. Um, and it was, it was an amazing donation. And then I was at Carnes and they asked me if I wanted to donate to the food pantry. <laughs> and I said, oh no, I, we just had food pantry and, and I do donate. And as a matter of fact, you folks donated too. And she said, oh, is it for New Hope? And I said, yes. She goes, well, that's what we're collecting for. We're still collecting more. So they're collecting from their customers as well. So, so um, I just wanted to give a shout out to them and, and thank them uh, for uh, continuing to support families in this area. Next week, next Sunday, we're going to have some caroling, outdoor Christmas caroling. And um, so dress warmly, depending on the weather. Who knows, with the way things have been going this year, it might be sunny <laughs> at 6.30. <laughs> we'll be outside, out front at 6.30. We'll have some, um, we'll have some <laughs> um, electric candles, little tea candles for you to, to use, and um, where you can bring your own candle. If you'd like to bring your own candle, that would be great as well. Um, 6.30. 
20th, uh, probably just for half an hour. People want to stay longer and sing, they're, we're welcome, but um, we're just planning on a half an hour to light up the outside and to, to share some music with the community. Uh, there are gifts downstairs for uh, our shut-ins, and um, I could still use five or seven people to make deliveries, if that's something that you would like to do. They are downstairs in the fellowship hall, and the names and addresses of the people that still need to have them delivered, you will find on the table uh, in the fellowship hall. If you can do that and would like to do that um, as, a, as a gift to someone, from our congregation, please uh, go down after church service and pick one up and pick a name and take a smile to someone. I still have an opening for an Advent reading next week. If anybody would like to do that, let me know. It's a joy to gather together and to share some of the things that are happening um, with our announcements, but also to re recognize that all of that, all that we do is a part of worship and a way in which we show our worship in the world. So let us continue in worship as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go deeper in the presence of Christ. Would you join with me, please, in this opening prayer? Merciful God, we ask you to open us up to hear the words of Mary's song once more. May we be inspired this day to create change. May we be stirred to action in our faith community and beyond it. May we listen to, may we listen to your voice still speaking among us, shift us so that we live fully as people of joy. Amen.
our Advent reading, and it's coming to us from someone's home. Let's deck the halls with the joy of the coming Messiah. We rejoice in our God and Savior. God has done great things for us. Joy has come in unexpected ways. Our hearts are overflowing. Let's deck the halls with joy. The lights of hope and peace have invited us to be part of God's dream for wholeness in the world. Today we light the candle of joy as a reminder that this time of waiting is not one of sorrow, but one of possibility. May we make space to connect with the one who breathes joy into our world. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're comfortable with standing, and we're going to sing together two verses of I'll Come All Ye Faithful. Please be seated. Well, for my children's chat today, I wanted to uh, remind the children of something really joyful that's going to be happening this coming week, hopefully. We will have good weather at the end of the week, the 19th, 20th, that's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, not this Monday, but the following Monday, the 21st, 19th, 20th, 21st, and possibly the 22nd, you will be able to see something unusual in the sky. It is when Jupiter and Saturn are going to be lined up so that they look like they're one big bright light in the sky. I don't know how big and bright. It won't be as bright as the moon, but it will be bright. And on the 21st, the 21st is the longest night of the year. So sometime between 6 and 7 o'clock on that night, and each night this coming weekend, you should be able to see them, these two planets close together. If you have binoculars, you might even be able to see that they're really two. If you have a telescope, if you're lucky enough to have a telescope, even a small one, you can probably see the moons of Saturn and the moons of Jupiter, and you'll see the rings around Saturn, and you'll see the spot on Jupiter. And it, this has not happened for 400 years. And before that, it was 400 years before that that it happened. 
And it won't happen again where we'll be able to see it very well in America until 2080. Hmm? He said he doesn't think he'll be around. Do you think he's that old? <laughs> you never know, do you? Well, you folks will be around. All the youngsters will be around, and maybe. But this week is supposed to be even better than that. So don't wait for 2080. Watch it this week and see it. And some people are calling it, what, the Christmas star. Now. Is that what happened when Jesus was, was born? We don't think so, we're not sure. But it was something like this. Um, and in the year seven, seven, oh my gosh, in the year seven, right all the way back at the beginning, counting time after Jesus' birth, Three planets got together, and they look like they were really close together. Not, not really close. They just line up. It's called a great conjunction. And they line up. And that must have been even brighter and amazing. So you want to see the Christmas star for 2020. And there's two reasons you want to see it. Because most of us won't be around <laughs> to see it the next time. And, and, and then after that, who knows, it might be another 400 years. So this might be the once in a lifetime chance to see these planets and this, this elongated star in the sky. But it's not the star, it's the planets. And it's 2020. I mean, something unusual has to happen in 2020, right? Something special and something joyful, something we can look up at and say, God made the heavens and all the glory thereof, all the stars in space, and remind ourselves that no matter what happens down here on this earth, God has us in his care. God sees us, and God knows us. And we're a small part of his great, beautiful creation, and yet he loves us and cares for us. That ought to give us joy like we've never experienced before. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this magnificent creation, for the opportunity to look out into the, into the heavens and see your glory and be reminded of your love for us. May this be a Christmas star for us, even though that's just a nickname. Jesus, make it be your star for us. Help the young ones to grow in wisdom and knowledge of you. Hold them in your heart, and may they love you all the days of their lives. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. It's 
It's a melody that started in a manger. From the moment that the Father gave His Son, it's a song of peace given by no other. How the God of all gave all for everyone. Like angels still the heavens, our voices fill the earth. Resounding and rejoicing over Jesus' birth. So once again, The sound the shepherds heard once again we sing, O come Emmanuel. The songs about a Savior's love that never ends. Our hearts long to sing them once again. Let Christmas music fill the air once more. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Once again we sing joy to the world. A silent night, a holy night. The sound the shepherds heard once again. We sing, O oh, come, Emmanuel. The song's about a Savior's love that never ends. Our hearts long to sing them once again. Our hearts long to sing. Thank you very much. Scripture lesson today is coming from the first chapter of Luke. Um, finally heading into the actual Christmas story according to Luke. And um, this will be familiar. The angel has visited Mary and has let her know that uh, she is going to have a child. Uh, surprise to her. And he also informs her that her relative Elizabeth is also going to have a child in her advanced age. And so we be, begin with verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. 
Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary replied, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercies extend to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers, And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months before she returned to her home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Interesting passage. God provides joy in the most unexpected ways and through unexpected people and in unexpected places. We continue thinking about the ways that we can deck our halls with what really matters, meaning decking, uh, decorating our hearts and ourselves with what really matters, with peace and love and joy, hope. How many times have you started out to do something that you didn't really want to do, but find that you ended up enjoying it, having a good time? Did you ever have something planned where you volunteered for something and you went, oh, why did I I say I would do this? I, 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 I just, I don't think I can do it and I'm really not looking forward to it. And then you get involved in it, and maybe you're with other people, and and it suddenly becomes a joyful experience. And you found out that you really had a good time. You really enjoyed it. (laughs) Sometimes it's things that we've been asked to do, and, and we just say, oh, okay. But sometimes it's also, you started out thinking you might like to, and then you started thinking about it as you were waiting for the time to come to actually do it, and, and you maybe became a little um, ang- anxious about whether you could enjoy it and, and be able to do the job or the, the task at hand. I remember the first time that um, I was tricked into teaching Sunday school. Well, I had been going to a Sunday school class for older people. I think I've told you this before. I'm not sure, but I used to get, when I first came back to church, I went to church with all the old people, the old class. And pastor was always trying to get me to get into the young person's classes. You know, I said, no, I'm staying where all the wisdom is. So um, they, they, the, the woman that taught the class said, I'm not going to be here next week. Can you, can you lead? I was like, oh no! Oh, here's the here's the leader's book. All you have to do is read the read it, and then read the questions, and they'll help you. And and they did, and it was very good. Well, unbeknownst to me, not unknown to me, she and and the people in the class were setting me up. They all told the pastor what a great job I did in teaching the Sunday school class, and that maybe it was time for him to ask me not to go to the young people's class, but to teach Sunday school to the little ones. Well, I got along pretty well with adults, but I wasn't too sure how I was going to get along with first and second graders. Just saying. I just wasn't sure. Especially since um, half of the first and second graders were from Cambodia and didn't speak English. <laughs> and, um, but I said yes for some reason. <laughs> 
I said yes, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. I was one of these people that, if you asked me to try it, I would try it and I would let you know, I can't do this or, yeah, this is working out okay. Well, I said, I'll try it. And I thought, what's the, what's the first lesson? What's the first lesson you can teach young people that can't even understand English? So, so we taught. I taught them a new language. I taught them all a new language. They had started to learn the different names for God: Elohim, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, and and we learned songs to go with it so that it would help them. And had a little boy that used to hide underneath the table all the time. And um, his sister was always trying to get him out from underneath the table. And um, the other kids were always, I said, just leave him alone. If he wants to listen from under the table, that's where he needs to listen from. Uh, I didn't realize um, that that was a smart thing to do. I just didn't want to be distracted by this little boy underneath the table. And before long, his little head would pop up because nobody was paying attention, right, you know. His little head would pop up, and he'd look around, and then he'd duck back down under the table. And we'd just go on with what we were doing. And then pretty soon, he was up, like standing, and then he would sit. And then all of a sudden, he was like sitting at the table with all the other little boys and girls and listening and learning together. Um, I was very, very anxious going into that classroom. I didn't think I had the gift to do any of that. Uh, I didn't have the ability, I hadn't worked with little tiny children before, and somehow, through Christ, pretty soon it was a joyful experience. Especially when, they, when we started to learn songs together, and we could go into the sanctuary on Sunday morning and sing those songs, and you could see how proud they were that they could share in the worship service. It was a joyful time, something I really wasn't really looking forward to, but it ended up being joyful. And looking back on it, I know that God was training me up to teach. And so eventually, um, I ended up teaching almost every grade that there was uh, in my time at that church and other churches that I attended, even out in Oregon. And. Uh, honed my teaching skills that I didn't even know that I had any. And probably I didn't. I think they were a joyful gift from God to me. So we all have an opportunity and different opportunities that come up over and over again to experience unexpected joy. And sometimes God has a way, just a silly way of... Um, turning things into unexpected joy for us through the people in our lives and uh, like Elizabeth and Mary in our scripture story today. Elizabeth helps Mary in her um, very challenging situation. You know, Mary is struggling with these changes. She's not exactly sure how she's going to be received, but she knows that God is on her side, and she knows that her relative Elizabeth, she's being told about her for a reason, and she goes to see Elizabeth. And there's this incredible blessing and welcome, welcome from Elizabeth, her relative, there's no judgment, there's no questioning, just amazement and joy at seeing Mary and recognizing something that God has given to her as well, a joy. And, and, and the baby that's in her womb will eventually be John, John the Baptist, the baptizer. And even John the baptizer in his mother's womb recognizes Something joyful is happening. It's a miracle, Elizabeth's pregnancy, just like it's a miracle of Mary's pregnancy. And this is a witness to Mary, and a witness to the presence of God, and e an even greater miracle, that is the Christ child that Mary carries the Lord of all. 
perhaps Mary needed a little boost because of what she might expect when she does go back home again. She probably has some anxiety and she's anxious about how this child is going to be celebrated, but she's praising God in the midst of it. Brought Elizabeth's joy, and Elizabeth's joy is transferred to Mary. And from Mary's perspective of an unwed uh, mother to joyful praise for God. Mary hears Elizabeth's praise, and she joins in and rejoices also. Declares her praise in song. My soul magnifies the Lord. Beautiful praise that we read almost every year at this time. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. In the midst of that, she realizes that no matter what she's facing, she is the humble servant of God, and God is paying attention to her. Elizabeth's reaction confirms to her that God will continue to pay attention to her. And there's this joy that God's promise will be fulfilled all the way from Abraham, the promise to Abraham to all the descendants, Mary makes this incredible connection to care for the lowly, the humble, the hungry. And he will care for them through the people and to the people. Her faith, her understanding of scripture, of the promises of God, her devotion to God, really shines forth and are poured out at this very moment of this praise song. She sings of God's goodness, God's greatness, God's faithfulness, God's power. And did you notice, have you noticed when you read this, that it's all in the present tense? She doesn't say, his mercies will extend to those who fear him from generation to generation. No, it extends now. It, it doesn't say he will perform mighty deeds or he used to perform mighty deeds. It says he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud. That wasn't the truth of the reality that was going on around Mary that day. But in the prophetic word and in the prophetic promise that she that she sings forth at this moment, she recognizes that God is in the process of starting something, and when that starts, then things can and will be different. He has filled the hungry with good things. They were still hungry people. But she knows through God that God is has a different desire than the reality that surrounded them, and it was God's desire to scatter the proud, to bring down the haughty, lift up the humble, to fill the hungry, to help his servant, Israel. The joy we experience from God I don't know how we can always put it into words, it can't, but it can't be kept to ourselves. It can't be kept to ourselves because we might encounter a Mary that needs to know everything's going to be all right. We encounter people within our families, our extended families, that need to know that everything's going to be all right. And the joy that you can share from God, the knowledge that you know that the reality doesn't quite look like what we wanted 2020 to be and Christmas to be in 2020, but it is God's desire that we have the joy of Christmas in our hearts and in our minds, no matter the circumstances that surround us. She couldn't help but sing out to God. We receive this message 
the same mercy and grace that we have always received, and it's the same that gave Mary the joy and the assurance that she had. Even in the midst of uncertainty and anxiety and troubled times, and her society and her government were not looking out after her. She found just the cause to give God joyful praise. And we ought to be able to do the same. For our mighty God continues to do great things for us. In what ways can you look for unexpected places of joy? How can you look for a different, more joyful perspective in your current situation and our current situation of life? Just singing a song, writing a prayer, reaching out to community? How can we as a community of faith share joy with the community beyond here? Ask yourself this question. Are you ready to share the joy and blessings with the world just like Mary did? God's joy is contagious cause us to celebrate the blessings that have come and are, are here and the blessings that will come because we know that God is faithful. So we give joyfully of what we have and what we've been blessed with, knowing that God will use our gifts and multiply God's blessing in the world. Our skills, our talents, our generosity. Let us pray. Great God of power, you continue to inspire us to live more fully in this world as your people. May the gifts we give this day inspire hope, grant peace, and be received with joy. Amen. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. I can't believe this is happening. We have a guest coming. I see, I can, I, I see her sleigh. It's, it's cookie cutter! I, I did see her. I'm not fooling. I am. I'm Cookie Cutter, and I've been here to share your Christmases the past few years at the Angels Among Us Cafe. This year's a little bit different, so I thought we'd come and just share with you a little bit this morning. Oh, Crasher. Crasher? He didn't follow me in. Where'd he go? Crasher? I'm sorry, I got lost downstairs. I was wandering around down there in the dark, and then I found the kitchen and some goodies. You know, I think I found some cookies, and I thought I heard somebody mention that they might be needed a couple weeks in the future, but there aren't any left, so hopefully it's okay that I eat. You didn't even save me one? No. Aww. Sorry. Crusher. Did you see our, our guests were here this morning? Oh, hello there. Wait, I recognize some of these folks. They were at the party last year. Mm -hmm. So, if they're here now, then there must be a party. Yes? Yes! I love parties! I do too. All the jokes and the singing and the dancing and the joy and the cheer. I know. I love parties too. And you know what? Who did I see? It's a shame we couldn't have them here this year. Steve! Steve from Steve and the Stocking Stuffers are here. I'm 
so glad you're here too, but I'm sorry the band can't play. So sad. So Crasher, we're here to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, even though there's no party. I'm sorry, no party. But we're gonna bring some joy to you all this morning. Just you and me. No party. No party. Aw. Well, can we at least tell a couple jokes or sing something? Please? Wouldn't you like to hear a joke or two? Yeah! yeah. You're encouraging him. No. All right. You can tell a couple jokes and then maybe we can sing a song. Would that be okay? Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Did you know Santa had only eight reindeer last Christmas? Eight? Comet stayed home to clean the sink. Why do Dasher and Dancer love coffee? I have no idea. Because they're Santa's Starbucks. Uh. Why was the snowman looking through the carrots? Uh-oh, I don't know. He was picking his nose! Oh, no, no, that's enough jokes. We'll end on that one, no more, no more. <laughs> But I have a lot more. We can save them for later. Okay, you know what? I heard you're having an ornament exchange. Who is my name? I love getting gifts. Who is me? Oh, I do too. I do too, especially Christmas gifts. Who has my name? Excuse me. I don't think your name's in a hat. What? What do you mean, put in a hat? Why would our names be in a hat? Well, no, 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 not your hat. That's how they, that's how they do the exchange. They pull names out of a hat and, oh. and we're not in it. Okay. For some reason, we're not in it. But you know what? You and I can exchange names. Really? You, just you and me. Just that sounds great. Me. Hmm. Wait, I wonder whose name Elliot. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Well, you know what we could do? We could include our families in the exchange, and that way there'd be a lot more people to choose from. Sounds good to me. Yeah, the more people the better, right? Yeah. Okay, so you met my husband last year, Pizza Cutter. Okay, he's not here, but we'll put him in the exchange. And then there's my oldest daughter, Muffin, and her husband, Chip, and they live in Tennessee, and they have four little marshmallows that they're chasing all around the house all the time. And then there's my son, Doe, and he and his wife, Flower, they live in Delaware. And then there's my youngest, and she just happens to be here this morning, Eclair, Eclair, say hi. Hi, how are you? You know, I'm just so very proud of my little crumbs. They're just so sweet. Crasher, tell us about your family. Well, my wife, Smasher, is here with us this morning as well. Smasher, hey! We have one pet named Dasher Jr. He runs and flies all around the house all day. As a matter of fact, he's how we got here this morning. He's so good at pulling our compact sleigh all by himself. Oh, that's awesome. Where's he at now? Well, I left him out in the parking lot, but it seems to me I might have seen him running around town, and I think he might have ended up behind the modular. Oh dear, I hope he's here for you when we have to leave. I hope so too, it's a long walk. <sighs> well, in closing, we'd like to do a song for you. Now, we've been practicing and practicing and practicing our Christmas carols, and we have a large repertoire, repertoire, repertoire? Repertoire. Repertoire. Ready to sing for you. Now, does anybody have a favorite they'd like us to sing? Now, you have to raise your hand, okay? <gasps> Smasher! Um, I like Christmas in jail, oh, what a pain. What? <laughs> I, dear, where'd that come from? You've never been to jail? I don't think we know that. That I know of. I never heard. Oh, oh, well, I don't know. Sorry, I don't think we know that one. Teach it to him later. 
Okay. Thank you. How about anybody else have one? Good King Wences, what? No. We don't know that one either. We don't know that one either. I, I don't think so. I, we just didn't practice those, I guess. No, we must not be very versed in our Christmas I, carols. I, apparently not. Apparently not. How about, how about the guy in the back? Do you have one? Yes, uh, I've got one. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, Crasher, look who it is! Oh my heavens, it's Chris T. Moss! Chris, come on up here and join us! Folks, do you remember Chris? He used to be my co-host a couple years ago before um, Crasher and before he ho headed off to game show host college in Pittsburgh. Chris, it's so good to see you. Please tell us how your schooling's going. Oh, please, uh, you can call me Chris T. Mask this year. Oh, <laughs> that's so fitting, isn't well, it? Well, um, you know, game show host college, it was really tough. Uh, there was just too much math for me. You know, uh, survey says 53 people. It's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of numbers. You know, uh, I had to transfer to something easier, uh, engineering. Oh, oh, well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I was looking forward to seeing you on TV, though, and, and being rich and famous. Well. But, I don't know. So, what song did you want us to sing? Oh, uh, I wanted to sing the first Noel. We know that we one! We know that one! Yes, we do! Yes, yes, we know that one. Well, uh, actually, before we sing, uh, could I tell a joke? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, miss, I miss telling jokes and dancing and singing with I all love of hearing you. jokes. Go, yeah. go, 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 go. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, what goes, oh, 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 Santa walking backwards? Uh, oh, <laughs> no. Oh, oh and what, what goes, ho, 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 Santa in his garden? Oh, <laughs> you still have it, Chris. You got some good ones. But you know what? You want us to sing. We know the song. So, I have an idea. Would you like to sing with us? Sure, why not? Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Now there's three of us. I think we need one more person, though. Hmm. And, hmm, who's it gonna be? I think I saw the lead singer from the group that sang last year, the Fruitcakes. Remember the Fruitcakes, yeah. the ladies group that sang? That's right, yeah. They were so good. The lead mm -hmm. singer is here today, too, and I bet you if we ask her, she might come up and join us. I bet you would. Ooh. Would you join us to sing the first Noel? I would love to join us. Come yes. on! Can I please Come tell back. one more joke before we sing? Please, please, please. Okay, go ahead. One more joke, and then that's it. No more. Mm, okay, here we go. Okay. Knock, knock. Murray. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, yes. There's some things you gotta do. <laughs> if the hat fits, wear it. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Well, it's so nice to have been here with everyone today, and we thank you for letting us come and just wish you a Merry Christmas and share a few minutes. So everyone, enjoy your Christmas and enjoy your day, and I hope you enjoy our last song. Mm. Mm. No first no. To certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so.
Christmas party next year at Christmas. Thanks for giving us some joy today. Don't forget if you'd like to spread some joy to some others, there are some um, arrangements that, need, that, that can be delivered to some of our shut-ins and, and the people that we're missing um, these days. And um, you can go downstairs and pick a name and, and a, an arrangement and take it out. So may the joy of Christmas fill you this week, and may you see the Christmas star. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, may you know his presence, his mercy, his grace, and his joy. Amen.